Hey everybody, this is the uh, in-depth tutorial uh, for Build Your Kingdom here. Uh, we're taking this song at 137. Uh, the click track is on quarter notes. It's based on um, the Rend Collective arrangement of the song, but we decided to kind of go a different direction with it. Um, not that theirs is bad, but I did find that as we were putting our heads together at Worship Solutions, trying to find a way to make this presentable to small church and modern worship services and things like that, how uh, taking Ren's uh, energy, the energy of their track, and um, making it translate to a five-piece worship team that isn't used to playing kind of folky Americana, Mumford & Sons kind of vibe, um, we wanted to kind of add some electric guitars, add a little bit of a different drum groove. And so um, I'm pretty stoked about this arrangement. This is a really, really fun song to play. I think when you get behind the kit on this thing, you're just going to have a blast. It's literally like a plane has taken off or you're on this train, that locomotive. It's a little bit of a choo-choo train vibe and you're just like trucking to the finish line. I want to talk about the sound of the drums in this tutorial because uh, you'll notice that they sound a little bit different. We're using what I'd like to call a dead tom technique. And to make this groove easier, I wanted to play it on the rack tom because if we play it on the floor tom, it's a tom-based groove. If we play it on the floor tom, it's really tough to get your hands crossed back over your body onto the snare. And so we chose to do it with a uh, uh, rack tom instead. But in order to make a rack tom sound like a floor tom, take the dead tom trick. First off, you'll notice that we're using these plastic rings on the toms. The difference in a rack tom without it, it's got that pow kind of vibe, right? It's just ringing out. And uh, especially when you're doing four on the floor and if you're behind the drum cage and there's a mic on that head, that top head's gonna resonate, right? So we've taken um, just an Evans plastic ring, I've wrapped it around, now it's a little deader, right? And so it doesn't have the sustain that the top head had. And now I'm gonna take a drum key and I'm gonna make a dead tom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the lug that's closest to my hi-hat foot and I'm just gonna drop it all the way, like super loose. I'm going, literally, you can just take the thing out if you want to, like it's just finger loose. And then, it's just dead. That top head doesn't resonate at all, which is great for a groove like this, and here's why. This is the groove pretty much through the whole song. So because that groove is so busy, you don't want a lot of sustain on the drum. You don't want it ringing out like -la 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 -la, like a drum bell kind of thing. What you want is something super dead. If you don't want to do the detune of one lug, another hack is to just take like a t-shirt or a dish rag and literally just put it over the drums. It's a super Beatles trick to do if you're into the Beatles from the 60s, ever listen to some old classic rock and roll like that. They would put drum, you know, towels on the drums all the time. The, the sound of the rack tom groove goes through the whole thing and it's always trucking this, this kind of vibe that's like one and a two and a three and a four eanda. That's how we say it. One and a two and a three and a four eanda. If you're gonna count along just in drummer speak, So that's your tom groove. It's four on the floor throughout though. Four on the floor basically means every, every quarter note gets a kick drum hit. Four on the floor. Then. Now the rad thing about this groove is it doesn't have a whole lot of high end excitement. And what I mean by that is a lot of times, um, well even here, we've got the kit mic'd up, I'm talking into microphones above me, watch this. Everything just goes almost like something atomic just went off, right? Everything blows out and it gets crazy. That's gonna happen in your local church as well. You gotta be really sensitive how hard you hit your snare, how hard you hit your cymbals, and how hard you hit your hi-hat in perspective to the rest of the kit. So a groove like this is super cool because it's all low end driven which means you can pull your kit from out of the cage and go with a more broken down setup because in reality, I'm not gonna use the hats, this cymbal, my right crash cymbal, or my floor tom for this whole song. I'm using these four pieces, snare, kick, rack tom, and this right, what I'd call the off crash, just off my hi-hat. And, and that just makes for something really fun because you can kind of keep your main kit set up behind the glass 
And then like when it comes time to lead this, you can lead with a lot more energy out front and it won't feel too loud to everybody. They'll just think it's a great time. So four on the floor. verse group. I'm going to break it down a lot slower. Right? That's how you play it. You can practice that. I'm a big advocate of playing drums on your knees or on a practice pad. You can do this at the dinner table if it doesn't bug your parents or your significant other or your dog if you don't live with anybody. I'm telling you, it's really, really helpful to always have sticks with you, always be practicing in your off times, building that foot to hand independence and building accents and rudimentary exercises into your hands. You'll notice that there's an accent on this groove. It's not just all flat uh, dynamic, right? It's like this. If I was gonna hit it on a rim, it'd be like hard hit and some supplemental ghost hits and some other hard hits, check it out. Like, right? This one's always kind of driving that quarter note with the kick drum. Right? I'll talk about this a lot. There's a melody to the sound of drums. If you can start thinking of your drum kit as a melodic instrument and not just an instrument of rhythm, it goes a long way in how to serve the song. So just be thinking about as you play the parts, like singing, being able to speak the parts, sing the parts. And that's how you get through the verse. All right, so we've gone through the basic verse drum pattern. Now let's hit the chorus. The chorus has the same exact thesis, four on the floor with the kick drum, a one and a two and a three and a four kind of pattern on the tom, only now we're gonna throw some really cool off snare beats in, and this is when the groove gets really fun to play. And it sounds a lot more complex than it is. I'll show you what it sounds like. Right, just like that. So, teaching it to you really slow, this is the hands pattern. to play slow but the fun thing is once you get the slow pattern down you can just kind of ramp up your speed now I've talked about practicing right you can practice this thing on your on your leg as well I'm telling you it's the only way to watch television just get your hands working The only thing that changes in the song uh, to add some sparkle, some high-end excitement, remember we've talked about how hard to hit your cymbals, how hard to hit your toms and kick, things like that, just basic dynamics. But um, I always like to throw in like a crash cymbal at the top of the chorus, a crash cymbal in the middle of the chorus, and a crash cymbal at the end of the chorus, just to kind of tell people, hey, wake up, crash this. Hey, here I am, I'm the chorus, right? So let's just practice it with the crashes. That's basically how I'm getting out of the, um, the out on the chorus, is just going. I'm 
telling you, this groove is so fun to play. I can't wait for you guys to try it out. I've got a play along video where we're gonna go through it all, just playing along with the song, and you can practice it with me. That's at a full 137. Uh, but I would encourage you, man, when you play this track, uh, and you play, or when you play the song in your church, if you want to go with this drum groove with our arrangement, try to see if you can get your worship pastor and, and senior pastor to let you pull the kit out from the cage and then just be dynamically sensitive. I, I'm, just, I'm telling you, sometimes when you do that, it creates such a fun, raucous, like family atmosphere. I think it'll be great. So take care. I'll see you on the play along. <laughs> 